Welcome to part 5 of Let's Play Trial of Champions by Ian Livingstone. At the end of the last part I was on paragraph 209. Okay, just before I continue, um, my apologies if you can hear a buzzing. I have a heater on. Um, it's very cold and I'm not going to turn it off. Anyway, so here we go. Um, you open the horse's saddlebag and find a mirror and a wooden whistle, which we've already noted. Uh, you slip them inside your pouch and continue along the tunnel. It soon ends at a T-junction. If you wish to go left, turn to 129. If you wish to go right, turn to 351. Okay, we are going to go left and turn to 129. Here we go. Now, the tunnel extends only 20 yards before it ends at the edge of a dark pit. Uh, you drop a stone down the pit and hear it hit the bottom a few, a few seconds later. The sides of the pit are too smooth to climb down and it would be foolish to jump down. If you are carrying a climbing rope over your shoulder and wish to climb down the pit using that, turn to 264. If you, if you do not wish to climb down the pit or are unable to do so, you must walk back along the tunnel and pass the last T-junction. Turn to 351. Okay, uh, we do have some uh, a coil of strong rope, so we are going to use it, and we are going to go to 264 because of that. You tie one end of the rope around an outcrop overhanging the pit. Gripping the rope firmly, you slide over the edge and then ease yourself down the pit until you reach the bottom. A new tunnel leads away from the pit, somewhat narrower than the tunnel above. If you wish to follow the new tunnel, leaving your rope behind, turn to 190. If you would rather climb back up the rope, retrieve it and walk back along the tunnel past the T-junction, turn to 351. Okay, we are going to leave the rope behind and uh, turn to 190. So I'll just say left behind in parentheses left behind, no, nope, behind, I don't want that there we are okay, 190 190 right from a cave entrance in the left hand wall you can hear the sound of grunting the entrance is low down and you will have to stoop to enter if you wish to enter the cave, turn to 279. If you would rather continue walking along the narrow tunnel, turn to 230. Okay, um, we're going to enter the cave and turn to 279. Oh, missed it. No, there it is. There we go. The cave opens out, but is still quite small. There is a strong musty smell in the air, and the grunting sound appears to be coming from behind a rocky outcrop at the back of the cave. An ugly creature suddenly steps into view, its small humanoid body covered with hair. Its head resembles that of a boar, with two curved tusks protruding from its mouth. Um, armed with a stone club, it is obvious that the advancing Tusker is not an ally. Tusker, skill 6, stamina 6. Once again, you are fighting for your life. If you win, turn to 339. Okay, Tusker, 6-6. Six, six. Here we go. Oh, just after Bonesy 2. Okay, Tusker, 6 and 6. There we go. Okay, so, rolling for him first. 6 plus... 8 is 14, I get 18. So 14 to 18. Put some down to 4. Okay, 6 plus 7 is 13, I get 21. So 13 to 21. Oops, did not want that. Put some down to 2. And then the last one, I hope. Uh, 6 plus 8 is 14, I get 20. So 14 to 20. And that is the end of Mr. Tusker. Goodbye. Okay, move the buzzing and we're there. Okay, so we won and we're turning to 339. No, that's not female. I was about to say hubba hubba, but it's it's not female. I thought it might be because of the things on its head. I um, thought it might be hair, but it's clearly supposed to be male. So no hubba hubba for you. Right, okay. Uh, the Tusker's cave contains few items, and the only thing that you find of interest is a crude pig made of red clay. The pig is hollow, and when you shake it, something rattles inside. If you wish to break the pig open, turn to 75. If you would rather leave the cave, turn to 167. We're going to leave the cave and turn to 167. Here we go. 
whatever's in there can't be good. <clears throat> At the back of the cave you find a small dark passage which winds away into the gloom. If you wish to follow the passage, turn to 144. If you would rather walk back out into the narrow tunnel, turn to 230. We are going to follow the passage and turn to 144. Whoops, missed it. There it is. The passage twists and turns for what seems like ages. There are no torches to light the way, and you have to walk in pitch darkness with your arms outstretched. You hear squeaks and squeals as scurrying feet run by, and once or twice something soft brushes against your legs. But you are not afraid of small rodents and continue resolutely. All of a sudden, your feet sink into something warm and slimy which squelches and emits a disgusting sulphur-like smell. Two more steps and the stinking slime is above your knees. If you wish to walk further into the slime, turn to 359. If you'd rather walk back along the passage, through the Tusker's Cave and along the narrow tunnel, turn to 230. Okay, that's not us. Um, we are going to walk further into the slime, uh, but before I do so, I'm just going to talk about the word further and the word farther. Okay, so now further and farther have very similar origins. Um, they both uh, they're both the uh, comparative of far. You know, I walk farther, I walk further. You know, so, so they're pretty synonymous. However, some people tried to make distinctions um, uh, several uh, decades and centuries ago. And they said that, oh, uh, further is more sort of like um, abstract, such as I thought further, or a further th uh, thought, such as another one. Whereas farther is more sort of real distance, like I walked farther. Um, although, <clears throat> although I want to agree with that, it's, it's simply not true. The words are pretty much uh, uh, synonymous, although further can be used as a verb, such as um, to further one's cause. Um, one wouldn't say to father one's cause. So they do have subtle differences, but they're, they're more or less uh, uh, they're more or less synonymous with each other. So that's all I have to say about those two words. But if you want to make a distinction, further is for abstract things and father is for real things but there you go anyway so we are going to walk further into the slime or farther into the slime and turn to 359 You are soon up to your waist in slime, and briefly it reaches up to your neck, but slowly the ground rises and you pass beyond what is actually a pool of volcanic mud. Now the mineral-rich the mineral -rich mud has fabulous healing properties. Add five stamina points and one skill point. Okay, you don't need the skill point, but I will take the stamina points. That puts me up to 13. There we go, lovely jubbly. Okay, um... Eventually the passage opens out into a chamber which is lit by glowing rocks. You see that the passage runs through the chamber and out through the back wall. In the centre of the room there is an elephant, nearly a yard high, or nearly three feet high, carved out of soapstone. Under its belly you see the hairline crack of a hidden compartment, but cannot see how to open it. Then you see another crack halfway along the elephant's trunk, and, and deduce that, if the trunk is pulled, the compartment might spring open. If you wish to pull the elephant's trunk, turn to 60. If you would rather follow the passageway, turn to 263. Okay, we are going to pull the elephant's trunk. That does not sound dodgy at all. Okay, and turn to 60. As expected, the hinged lid clicks and falls open when you pull on the elephant's trunk. A gold ring falls onto the floor and you, uh, you pick it up and place it in your leather pouch. You waste no more time in the chamber and walk quickly towards the passageway. Turn to 263. Okay, so we have another gold ring. That's good. There we are. Um, walk quickly towards the passageway, turn to 263. Here we go. The passageway continues to twist and turn through total darkness. At last you see light shining up through a hole in the floor. Standing over the hole you see that there is a much wider tunnel beneath you. If you wish to jump down to the tunnel below, turn to 315. If you wish to keep feeding your way along the dark passage, turn to 289. Okay. We are going to jump down into the tunnel below. And turn to 315. 
Oh, it's Bonesy too. Hello, Bonesy too. We go way back. Oh, Hubba Hubba. Mm mm mm. But she needs a bag over her head, obviously. Anyway, 315. I think I said that before, didn't I? Anyway, um, you look swiftly up and down the tunnel and suddenly see movement up ahead. Turn to 195. Okay, um, a figure ahead of you turns and slowly walks towards you. As he steps under a torch, you recognize the person clad in dark, spiked armor. One of the other contestants, um, one of the other contestants, the Chaos Champion, is advancing towards you, wielding a two-handed spiked mace. Will you defend yourself with your sword, turn to 247, throw a dagger at your adversary, if you have one, turn to 6, Try to talk to him. Turn to 112. Yeah, he's not the sort of person to whom we want to speak, is he really? Look at him. Okay, we are going to defend ourselves with our sword. And turn to 247. Oh dear. Uh, the Ravening Chaos Champion is a natural fighting machine, a train since birth to kill. His battle cry echoes down the tunnel as he works himself up into a frenzy for combat. Chaos Champion, skill 11, stamina 12. If you win, turn to, t turn to 180. Just realised I hadn't uh, seen a picture. I didn't show you the picture of him properly. There he is. There we go. Anyway, where are we going? 247. Chaos Champion, 11 and 12. It's another extremely difficult battle. He does not make this easy, does he, Ian, Ian Livingstone? Chaos champion. I mean, the very fact he's a champion, I mean, that sort of fills me with dread. I mean, he's a champion, which means he's beaten other people, several other very tough people, strong people. Okay, so, um, right, roll for him first. 11 plus 8 is 19. I get 15. Here we go. So 19 to 15, here we go. This is going to be a tough one if I actually make it through, which is not guaranteed, to be honest, especially with my awful stamina, because I get no refills, hint at hint hint I don't know why I'm saying that, because um, Ian Livingstone can't exactly give me a refill now, can he? But still, if you're watching this, Ian Livingstone, the small chance you're watching this, this is a very difficult book, and I don't appreciate it. Okay, 11 plus... Oh, great. 23. And I get 18. Oh, dear. I think this might be one where I'm going to have to uh, ahem, redo it. Because uh, this is not going well, is it? <sighs> right. Um, right. 11 plus 8 is 19. There we go. 19 to 15. Oh, I'm dead. This is... Uh, this is stupid. Oh, just put me out of my misery now, Chaos Champion. Dear, oh dear. Alright, 11 plus 6 is 17. I get... Look at that. 17 to 15. I mean, I'm, I'm just sort of prolong, uh, prolonging the agony here. Why do you get no health in this book? Why? What, who thought it would be a good idea? All right, 11 plus 7 is 18. I get 17. Oh, fantastic. 18 to 17. Oh, no, I'm nearly dead. Because Ian Livingstone decides to put stupidly hard battles in here. All right, 11 plus 6 is 17. I get... Oh, 17 to 18. I just beat him. Alright, only another million hits to go. Puts him down to ten. Alright, eleven plus three is fourteen. I get sixteen. So fourteen to sixteen. Yeah, I know I'm doing better now. I'm not going to win, though. There's no way I can win this. Eleven plus three is fourteen. I get fifteen. Fourteen to fifteen. Puts him down to six. 11 plus, tw there we are, 23 to 17. Put 
Let's down to one. Nearly dead. Don't you worry about that. I'm nearly gone. Right, okay. 11 plus 6 is 17. I get 19. Puts them down to four. Uh, 11 plus 9 is 20, I get 16, and I'm dead. Right, okay, so that's that. I'm dead once, so that's the end of the book. I hope you enjoyed this book. Um, please join me for the next one. But, uh, yeah, hopefully it won't be as repulsively difficult as this one. Okay, yes, I'm going to do it again, because we're not going to give up there, are we? Just because of a stupidly, overly powered um, foe like a Chaos Champion with any maximum stats. Um, okay, let's do this again. Okay, so 11 plus 6 is 17. I get 17 as well. So, right, no one gets hurt. Whoops. Okay, next, 11 plus 7 is 18. I get 17. Here we go. Not sure I want, did not want that. Oh dear. <clears throat> 11 plus. There. This. Nah, no, we're not doing this again because I'm going to die again. Right, third time lucky. Let's do this again. Right, this is the third time now. Right, 11 plus. Nine, no, 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 no. Yes. Right, 11 plus 5 is 15. So that gives me 15. At least give me a, a, a fighting a fighting chance here. So, 15. Actually, no, it's 11 plus 5, isn't it? Which is, yeah, 16. Sorry, I miscounted. 16. And I get... It's just it's just one thing after another here, isn't it? It's just whatever I... Whatever he gets, mine is always lower. It's just stupid. Give me some decent dice rolls. Right, 11 plus... No, 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 no. Yes, right, 11 plus 4 is 15. Right, let's start off with that, shall we? Right, 15. There's no possible way I can get lower than that. 15. Just 16. Right, okay. Right, 10. I'm sorry for cheating, but I have to show you the whole book. It's just stupid. Right, 11 plus... He's made it too difficult. 11 plus 4 is 15. I don't know why I'm... I'm typing it in now. What do I get? 19. Thank you. Was that so difficult? Right, puts them down to 8. I mean, not only do they give you these ridiculously hard battles, they give you no health. The only health I've had is, is that salted beef, that loaf of bread, and some volcanic mud. I mean, you don't even get any provisions in this. Um, okay, 11 plus... 2 is 13, I get 18. So 13 to 18. So I'm down to 6. Okay, 11 plus 7 is 18, I get 19. So 18 to 19. Put some down to 4. 11 plus 8 is 19, I get 14. So 19 to 14, and he wins that one. Excellent. That puts me down to 11. Here we go again. 11 plus 4 is 15. I get 18. So 15 to 18. I mean, I probably would have done this first time if they just given me some health. Right, 11 plus 6 is 17, I get 20. 17 to 20. Okay. I've, uh, I've beaten him, but I didn't defeat him because he killed me about 50 times. So, that's that. Goodbye, Chaos Champion, you dick. Um, Ian Livingstone, that's just too... It's just too difficult. You, should, you shouldn't have made this so difficult. You know, that's why Steve Jackson was the better writer. You know, he was the better of the two. His books are better. You just make yours too difficult. Okay. Um, right, so that's that. Right, if you win, turn to 180. Sorry about the cheating, but I have to show you the whole book, don't I? So if you want to, you can contact my solicitor. I'll give the details in the video description. Um, I, I won't really. Right, okay. There's a leather bag on the Chaos Champion's belt. Inside the bag, you find a piece of paper with set two 
358 scrawled on it in black ink. You also find a small ivory box with a skull painted on the lid. If you wish to open the box, turn to 282. If you'd rather leave it in the bag and walk on up the tunnel, turn to 44. Okay, I'll just write set to 358. There we are. Anyway, we are going to open the box. Didn't open the box. What was it last time? Didn't know what the box was. But we do keep finding each other, don't we? Um, leave a comment if you know where um, where that comes from. Okay. Um, 282. We are opening the box. You find a gold ring wrapped up in a dirty rag inside the box. You drop the ring into your leather pouch and walk on up the tunnel. Turn to 44. Okay, so we have another gold ring. Another Brussels sprout. Right, okay. Turn to 44. That's another reference, by the way. Not, leave a comment if you know where that's from. Okay. In the left-hand wall of the tunnel, you see a hole about half, uh, about one and a half feet in diameter. From inside, you can hear a strange mixture of clicks and hums. If you wish to climb through the hole, turn to 340. If you would rather walk on, turn to 155. We are going to walk on and turn to 155. You see in the right-hand wall a small recess in which two candles are burning on either side of a pewter plate. An assortment of nuts and dried berries are piled high on the plate and look very tempting. If you wish to eat some of the nuts and berries, turn to 119. If you'd rather walk on, turn to 288. Okay, we are going to eat some of the nuts and berries and turn to 119. The nuts and berries taste as delicious as they look. I want some nuts and berries now. Add two stamina points. Good, at last. Some health. But she up to a whopping 13. I'm ready for another Chaos Champion. Uh, just th throw one my way. Um, when you have eaten enough, you place the remainder in your pouch and set off once again. 10 to 288. Okay, so we've got some nuts and berries. Use an ampersand. And new line. There we go. Okay, um, turn to 288. The tunnel, soon's, the tunnel soon ends at an iron doorway. It opens easily and swings shut behind you. You find yourself in a cross tunnel and, looking left, are shocked by what you see. With vacant, hollow eyes staring from their sickly white faces, a large group of zombies is shuffling towards you. They're not zombies, they're walkers, because we watch The Walking Dead, um, where we encounter a zombie, then we have to talk about it for two episodes. Damn, you know, that program was really good in the first series. It started going bad in the second. The third was okay again, and then it just degenerated from that. I stopped watching at Series 8. I just couldn't bear any more. It's just, honestly, no, not Series 8. I finished Series 8, and then I couldn't bear Series 9. I just gave up. I think uh, it jumped the shark when, when it introduced the kingdom, and there's that bloke with a tiger and dreadlocks. And it's not that he's a king that got me. It's the fact that he has followers literally calling him your majesty. I just thought, this is just stupid. I'm not watching it anymore. And I haven't watched it since. And the less said about Fear the Walking Dead, the better. That is just terrible. Absolutely terrible. But I stopped watching that when they went on some sort of boat. And I just gave up there, really. I don't know what was going on. They were on a boat sailing on the coast or something. Um, Z Nation or Z Nation... That was good in the first series, uh, then I stopped watching that when I realised it was getting too much of a joke. And the latest one, uh, Day of the Dead series, I'm sorry, the first episode was okay, then I realised when there was an arm that was moving independently, I realised, yeah, they're going for the jokey thing, you know, like Z Nation, and I thought, I'm not watching that anymore, and I don't watch uh, Day of the Dead anymore, you know. Why can't, why couldn't they just stop The Walking Dead when... It went, you know, just before it went bad. I think the maker of Breaking Bad, which is a good series, he said he didn't want his series to turn into the one that said, oh, is that still on? And that's what people are doing with The Walking Dead. People are saying, oh, is that still on? And no one watches it anymore because it's just rubbish. You know, it's gone so far now, it's turned into a soap opera. All the characters are just sort of dying off. And you're just left with, you know, uh, the 
the uh, the remainder, like the king or whatever his name, King Ezekiel, that annoying, even she's left now, the one who played, um, what's her name, that Lauren Cohan or whatever her name is character, and that awful Carol, I just can't bear her, I just, I just don't want to watch it anymore, they killed off the only decent character in that was um, Merle, and they got rid of him and I didn't want to watch it anymore, so that's that. Um, well, I did watch it after that, but it, I just watched it out of necessity, really, thinking it would get better again. But it didn't, and now I don't watch it anymore. Anyway, enough of that. Thanks for listening. Anyway, uh, a large group of zombies is shuffling towards you. Their clothes hang in rags, and their pallid skin is scarred and peeling. Um, the door has no handle on this side of it, and there are far too many zombies for you to take on. You have no option but to turn right. You run on ahead of the zombies and soon arrive at the edge of a pit which looks too wide for you to jump across. The zombies come into sight and you realise that you are trapped. If you fight the zombies, turn to 185. If you try to jump across the pit, turn to 347. Brains. Brains. Right, okay. Um... We're going to jump across the pit, turn to 347. You know, just The Walking Dead is just depressing. You know, the first series of that was really good. You know, I liked it when they were, like, escaping the city and stuff. And then it degenerated into hanging around that bloody farm. Oh, and then they meet the governor and then a prison. It's always the same thing. You know, they... They escape, they go to a new stronghold like a prison, then some baddie rises up and they have to fight him, then they run off somewhere else again. It's just, give it up now, it's boring. Right, anyway, you run as fast as you can towards the pit and hurl yourself across the black void. If you are wearing a winged helmet, turn to 114. If you are not wearing a, wearing a helmet, turn to 226. Okay, we are wearing a winged helmet. And here it is, winged helmet, there we go. So let's uh, turn to 114. You fall well short of the other side of the pit, but instead of crashing to your death, you begin to float up to the other side of the pit, carried by the magical wings of your, of your helmet. You look behind you and see the zombies crowded together at the end of the pit. You allow yourself a smile of relief and walk on up the tunnel. Turn to 251. Oh, it's him again. Okay, 251. Okay, there is an archway in the left-hand wall through which you see a brass bell mounted on the wall at the end of a narrow corridor. If you wish to ring the bell, turn to 90. If you'd rather continue straight on, turn to 333. We are going to ring the bell and turn to 90. It doesn't make any sense, The Walking Dead. I mean, I'm sorry to go. It doesn't make any sense. He said at the end of the first of the the end of the first series of Walking Dead, he said everyone's infected. So that's why when you die, even though you haven't been bitten by a zombie, oh sorry, Walker, that um, you know you get turned into a Walker, even though you haven't been bitten. Right. If that's true, if that's true, then. Um, why is a zombie bite really dangerous? Why? How come when Carl was bitten by a zombie in the Series 8 or whatever, when he was bitten or some other crap, Series 9 or whatever, he was bitten by a zombie, how come it was dangerous? If he's already infected, why was it dangerous? It shouldn't have been any more dangerous than a normal wound. It should have like healed up and thought, oh, you're infected anyway, it doesn't make any difference. Why does a zombie bite matter if they're already infected? It's already going to turn into zombies anyway. Answer me that one. doesn't make any sense. That's, that's illogical. And also, it's stupid. I mean, the human skull is really hard. It's a really hard bone because it's meant to protect the brain. That's why when you fall um, or you, you know, and you bang your head on the floor or bang your head against the by wall by accident, it doesn't crack. You just bleed and, and it really hurts. It doesn't crack unless you do lots of damage to it. And even then, it's still pretty sturdy. You can't just smash an axe into someone's head or stab a knife into someone's skull and penetrate the brain. It doesn't make any sense. The brain is extremely hard even after, you know, they're zombies or whatever. It's still a skeleton. The skeletons last for centuries. You know, you can't just stab someone through the skull. It's not real. Um, uh, what else is there? Oh, God, that Negan, what an annoying... I just couldn't stand any more of that 
padding it out with bloody Negan. He's not even scary anyway. He's skinny with that stupid bat. It's not. It's just rubbish. It's just the whole thing is rubbish. Oh, oh, just that. Honestly, it's just crap. Anyway, um, anyway, we were going to ring the bell and turn to ninety. Nearly forgot there. Um, a delicate sound rings out from the small bell as you tap it with the hilt of your sword. You hear a fluttering of wings overhead. You get ready to defend yourself, but a white dove flutters down and settles on top of the bell. Much to your amazement, it is holding a gold ring in its beak, which it drops into the palm of your hand. With the ring safely stored in your pouch, you walk back down the corridor and turn left into the tunnel. Turn to 333. Okay, so we have another gold ring, another Brussels sprout. That'll be useful for later. Okay, and we're turning to 333. Which is 111 times 3. Right, okay. The tunnel ends at a T junction. Looking left, you see that the way is blocked by a pile of rocks. To your right, you see a wooden door some 20 yards down the tunnel. If you wish to investigate the rock down the tunnel, rather, if you wish to investigate the rock pile, turn to 96. If you wish to walk towards the door, turn to 375. Okay, we're going to investigate the rock pile and turn to 96. You pull a few rocks away from the pile and see that there's a doorway behind. If you wish to spend time clearing away the rocks so that you can open the, uh, open the iron door, turn to 215. If you'd rather walk to the uh, walk to the door on the other side of the T-junction, turn to 375. Okay, we are going to clear away the rocks and turn to 215. It takes about 20 minutes to clear the rocks away. Eventually you turn the turn the handle of the door and shove on it with and shove on it with your shoulder the rusty old door creaks open and you find yourself standing in a disused tunnel the air is dank and musty and you cannot see far into the gloom but as but as your eyes become accustomed to the dark you can see that there is no way forward as the roof of the tunnel has caved in on the back of the door there are words and numbers written in chalk, but it is too dark to see them properly. If you wish to fetch a torch from the main tunnel so that you can see to read the words and numbers, turn to 394. If you would rather forget about the derelict tunnel and walk to the door on the other side of the T-junction, turn to 375. We are going to fetch a torch to read the numbers and turn to 394. Oh, that's lucky. Uh, the torchlight casts eerie shadows inside the derelict tunnel, but you are concerned only with the words and numbers on the back of the door. Um, in barely legible writing, you read set 1249. You make a mental note of what you read and then walk out through the door towards the door on the other side of the T-junction, turn to 375. Okay, set 1249. Good. Um, turn to 375. Oops, wrong way. Okay. From the other side of the door, you hear the agonized cry of a man in pain. If you wish to open the door, turn to 168. If you'd rather keep on walking, turn to 138. Okay, we are going to find out what we're doing in the next video so thank you very much for watching this is a small paragraph it's a good place to end this uh, sorry about my rantings about the walking dead and wasted time and sorry about ranting or well, ranting but explaining the, the um contrived difference between uh, further and father um anyway so 375 is the paragraph we're doing next so Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and in part six, we will continue on. We are about um, we are about well, we're still we're about over halfway through the book now, but still, I'd say at least minimum two videos left. At least, I don't know if I could do it. No, I don't think I'll be able to do this in one. Um, we've got the rest of the uh, dungeon to do. Uh, and then we've got to do the yeah okay um okay so yeah so next video we'll be carrying on but it should last at least another two videos thanks for watching and goodbye.